good morning. I will uh, quickly uh, go through the uh, sequence of uh, yesterday to refresh your uh, memory and then uh, continue until the uh, late antique uh, period. Uh, yesterday uh, we talked about uh, structural uh, techniques. We talked uh, both about the potential of the arch as well as the Roman architectural uh, revolution utilizing uh, concrete. And the uh, second sequence, the Roman architectural revolution, will be continued further uh, today with the uh, Pantheon. Uh, yesterday, uh, we uh, uh, had started out with uh, the potential of the arch, as I said, and uh, remarked on the fact that uh, the arch could be uh, elevated <coughs> into a, a monumental form in its own right, as we see in the triumphal or ceremonial arches, but in um, a spectacular example, like the uh, Colosseum in Rome, we see the uh, rather uh, uh, the decorated, decorative and uh, uh, articulated use of the uh, arch, which you see uh, here. Uh, the uh, arches have become uh, scaled with the use of the applied classical uh, orders. On the other hand, we also see the application of uh, vaults, uh, battle vaults, the extension of the uh, arch into a, a vault, when you extend the arch horizontally, when you lengthen the uh, arch, you uh, end up with a uh, battle uh, vault. And the battle vault, we said, is a rather versatile form because you can wrap it around the uh, building in the form of a uh, corridor. You can uh, <coughs> tilt it, as in the case of the uh, Colosseum, to receive uh, seats. So, in a stone uh, architecture, uh, and the Colosseum is one of the last examples in Rome of stone architecture of such uh, monumentality, we see this used to a uh, great uh, effect. In this uh, reconstructed model of the uh, Colosseum, we um, uh, emphasize the fact that this may be considered a, a triumphal monument uh, in a way, because uh, it uh, had a scenario which could bring together uh, several thousand uh, people, 45 to 50,000 uh, people, as well as uh, hundreds of wild uh, animals together in a <laughs> bloody spectacle. So the scenario that uh, uh, faced the architect and the engineer to uh, get in these people to uh, allow for their uh, exit, to uh, allow <laughs> for their uh, control during the long hours of the uh, spectacles, and also to uh, arrange for the uh, uh, housing of the uh, <laughs> animals, their uh, containment, and then uh, to uh, allow for their uh, performance on the uh, stage were uh, great uh, spectacles uh, indeed, which required architectural ingenuity. And in that sense, the uh, Colosseum is a uh, <coughs> building of a great monumentality. It is an uh, image as well as uh, the uh, functional uh, aspect in what it made possible for the Roman uh, citizens. And the image uh, aspect was accentuated by uh, having uh, provisions for uh, uh, statuary along the uh, niches. And the functional uh, aspect is uh, made possible, as I uh, just uh, mentioned, in the control of the animals and the uh, people. But there were also uh, great feats of uh, engineering, like the uh, masts, to uh, receive an awning, a uh, shade which could be furled out and uh, furled uh, in and the navy had to be uh, used uh, for this. It's a huge uh, undertaking. Uh, the uh, huge uh, oval um, uh, plan of the uh, Colosseum is uh, built on a series of uh, uh, radiating uh, arms built of uh, tufa and uh, travertine, <coughs> and the system of uh, arches and vaults is used in an inclined way to give the perfect inclination 
for uh, the appropriate viewing for every person seated hierarchically and in their allocated social uh, stratification within the uh, Colosseum. The uh, uh, bare aspect of the Colosseum today, devoid of the uh, seats which uh, used to uh, uh, the allow the uh, spectators to watch the uh, games, is very visible uh, now because we see the uh, piers that uh, supported the uh, uh, steps on which the people uh, sat. There is a graduation of uh, materials, a, a gradation, uh, two far uh, blocks uh, below, and then uh, gradually uh, brick and uh, uh, a little uh, concrete on uh, top, and then at the very, very uh, top were uh, uh, wooden uh, areas where uh, the, the lowest uh, echelon people in the society watched the games standing up without uh, being uh, seated. Uh, the uh, arrangement underneath the floor, uh, we said, is also quite complex, sophisticated <coughs> and uh, intricate with uh, systems of uh, elevators and uh, pulleys which made it possible for the uh, animals to uh, uh, be uh, contained, starved, and then uh, let into the uh, arena in the most uh, fierce uh, form for their combat with each other or for their uh, combat with the uh, gladiators. And then there would be a, uh, a grill, a, a protection along the uh, outer edge to uh, protect the uh, VIPs from uh, any danger that might be inflicted from uh, jumping uh, animals. Uh, here uh, you see again a better uh, view of some of the uh, chambers where the uh, animals were uh, contained. So after the uh, Colosseum, we uh, embarked upon the uh, trajectory of uh, the uh, story of uh, Pozzolana, the uh, volcanic ash, which was the primary ingredient in the creation of Roman concrete. And we said that the uh, experimentation for the uh, Roman concrete and the discovery of the uh, strength of the Roman uh, concrete uh, the, uh, took place in uh, hydraulic uh, structures in uh, ports where they had to uh, build under uh, water for uh, structures uh, that had to do with windbreaks or with uh, harbors. And uh, in this uh, respect, it was uh, discovered that <laughs> the concrete, which included the Pozzolana, the volcanic uh, ash, uh, hardened uh, upon contact with you know, uh, water, and it became a rather strong uh, material. And uh, when this was uh, applied in an experimental way for uh, vaults that could be uh, built using a uh, wooden uh, framework, it was uh, discovered that many uh, creative uh, definitions of uh, spaces could be uh, brought into life. Uh, this means that uh, the architects were no longer confined to a rectilinear form, forms composed of uh, squares and uh, rectangles, <coughs> but they could have curvilinear spaces, they could have uh, spaces in the form of uh, uh, scallops uh, with uh, different creative configurations, uh, they could uh, vary the uh, heights of their buildings. They could uh, perforate the walls to uh, build uh, huge uh, windows without having to uh, worry about the uh, limitations in the uh, spanning property of uh, stone. So gone was the day of the uh, post and uh, lintel system. Uh, the uh, potential of the uh, arch was far surpassed by the use of the Roman uh, concrete. And the Roman concrete, we said, is uh, constituted of bits and pieces of uh, stone uh, mixed with uh, lime and uh, the volcanic ash, uh, Pozzolana, 
and then it is uh, all uh, poured in a uh, wooden uh, framework and once it dries and the wooden framework is uh, removed, uh, it becomes a, a strong, a supportive uh, material. Uh, but we mentioned there was one the problem uh, with this, and that is the uh, need to compartmentalize the uh, concrete as it was uh, drying. Once it dried, it became virtually indestructible. But uh, until it dried, there was the uh, danger that the wall might appear warped and uh, shapeless. So it had to dry uh, properly. And if you have uh, larger masses, uh, the uh, <laughs> drying would take a long, long time. So compartmentalization was used. The uh, walls were built in uh, segments. You would build, you know, one segment. It would dry. Then, you know, the other, the other. And then you used uh, <laughs> relieving arches, which would further, you know, compartmentalize the uh, wet uh, concrete. And once uh, the uh, concrete uh, dried, the relieving arches had no further structural uh, function. Uh, if you made a hole in the concrete and you uh, pulled out the relieving you know, arches, you would have a hole there. Nothing, nothing would happen. The wall would not uh, fall down. So this was uh, during the process of construction when the uh, relieving arches were quite effective. Uh, we uh, said that uh, other than the uh, harbors <coughs> and the uh, ports, uh, the uh, experimentation ground for the uh, uh, Roman uh, concrete was in uh, primary, in uh, private contexts, in uh, villas, in the private houses of the well-to-do. Uh, and within uh, these, uh, many creative uh, forms like uh, these came into uh, being. Uh, this example, uh, we said, is from the uh, Palatine in uh, Rome, from the imperial palace uh, there. Uh, but it is uh, uh, very uh, novel in architectural interior expression. But this expression is uh, <laughs> hidden and concealed from the outside. It is all uh, contained within a rectilinear framework. So uh, looking at this from the uh, outside, you would have absolutely no clue whatsoever as to uh, how uh, novel and uh, enterprising this new form making actually uh, was. So uh, these were fertile uh, grounds. Uh, then in the public uh, architecture, the bath buildings, small and larger bath buildings, also were uh, grounds where these uh, creative interior uh, definitions could take uh, hold until uh, we uh, reach other uh, more significant public uh, buildings. In the uh, fora, the Forum of Augustus, uh, the uh, Forum of uh, Trajan, we see uh, curvilinear uh, forms being uh, utilized. But even in the Forum of Trajan, which has a, a conglomeration of different uh, entities, uh, like uh, libraries, a basilica, a triumphal uh, column, and a uh, tomb, together with the uh, traditional uh, temple, just as in the Forum of uh, Augustus, uh, we find that uh, despite the uh, wider array and monumentalization of bringing together very different architectural uh, components, the uh, formal expression is very conservative. There are hemicycles, uh, yes, but if you look at the uh, basilica here and then the uh, uh, porticos, uh, you see the post and lintel system, the <coughs> age-old post and lintel system, because uh, here what is at stake is the uh, official state image, and they are not yet uh, prepared to uh, uh, jeopardize that that uh, image, so they stick to uh, the conventional uh, system. But contemporary with the Forum of Trajan, the uh, markets of uh, Trajan which is a new type of building, but an official uh, building belonging to the state. It's not a villa, it's not a 
palace for uh, private uh, use, uh, we see uh, the uh, uh, introduction of the uh, concrete uh, architecture on a large scale and out in the open. And in contrast to uh, the uh, uh, Forum of uh, Trajan, the forest of columns that you see uh, here is almost non-existent. There's almost not a uh, single column in the uh, markets of uh, Trajan because the conception and the design of the uh, building of the uh, markets is primarily through uh, Roman uh, concrete. So you have uh, the half uh, domes, you have curvilinear spaces, you have uh, large uh, vaults, and these are all executed, not in stone, not in tufa or travertin, but in uh, concrete. The uh, Roman architectural uh, revolution is uh, here in a uh, full uh, swing. Uh, we uh, mentioned the column of uh, Trajan as uh, also a differential expression, but that is stone. It has nothing to do with uh, concrete. So uh, it is uh, useful to remember that in the time of uh, Trajan, who was the military emperor who expanded the um, uh, territory uh, of the Roman Empire to its larger extent to see uh, different expressions and the bringing together of very different components uh, like uh, the most innovative forms, the most traditional forms and then uh, the unusual uh, the, the bringing together of these in one single complex including a uh, monumentalized arch like uh, this one is uh, remarkable. I mean, it shows uh, uh, the, the, an undertaking which is uh, unusual, deriving from the uh, status of the, uh, the emperor. Um, the uh, markets of uh, Trajan, as we uh, said, is a fully uh, concrete building faced with uh, brick. And uh, notable are the uh, perforations of the wall. Uh, it is uh, full of uh, windows. Uh, you could uh, introduce uh, light through uh, huge uh, openings. There were no uh, restrictions as to the width of the windows or the uh, height of the uh, windows. You could have um, uh, lateral you know, lighting coming in from partially uh, elevated components, as you see in this uh, large uh, hole. Uh, in this uh, large hall, uh, which we shall look at in uh, greater uh, detail, uh, this uh, part, which had a kind of clerestory uh, lighting, is uh, significant because the walls supporting <coughs> the part you know, underneath <coughs> have uh, no opening to the outside. But the uh, light you know, coming in from uh, these uh, the raised uh, components uh, which have been defined by groin vaults done in uh, concrete, allow the uh, light to uh, come in quite uh, effectively. And this scenario is quite uh, complex. Maybe there were no uh, wild animals and gladiators to deal with here in large numbers, but it was a very complex uh, territory because uh, the land was quite scarce. There wasn't uh, a lot of uh, land. Land was not abundant. Uh, it was an inclined, uh, steep uh, slope. So like the sanctuary of uh, Fortuna, the uh, markets has been uh, arranged uh, into the uh, land to uh, include the different uh, components which are all tied uh, together in uh, one unified uh, design. It may not be exactly uh, symmetrical, but still, you can't take one component from the uh, other without uh, spoiling the unity of the uh, design. Uh, the perforation of the uh, wall uh, is demonstrated uh, here. Huge uh, openings, uh, the concrete walls, the concrete uh, half uh, domes, uh, niches uh, alternating in the rectilinear and uh, semicircular uh, fashion, uh, allowing the uh, light to come in. So uh, the um, freedom was opened to the uh, architect to uh, create huge spaces, 
you didn't need to use uh, illusion uh, any uh, more. Could you close the uh, window, please? Uh, uh, there's light uh, in the. Is it okay? Okay. Uh, in the uh, larger central uh, hall uh, here, uh, we have the use of the uh, uh, groin uh, vaults, uh, light coming in from uh, both uh, sides, and these uh, sto uh, sh shops, uh, little uh, <coughs> cells of uh, shops, are in the two uh, stories, having no light coming in from here, but this huge uh, space is quite uh, uh, generously uh, lit because uh, the um, uh, openings between the um, piers of the groin uh, walls allow light to uh, come in from the uh, second uh, wall, which is uh, uh, open to the uh, outside. So uh, a space which would, would, be, which would have been uh, dark uh, but uh, monumental is now uh, flooded with light and still quite uh, monumental. <laughs> and uh, this is an important uh, achievement to uh, show uh, how the Romans not only uh, increased the scale of the uh, interiors, but they also uh, uh, could uh, change the very traditional uh, uh, implementations of uh, imp interior uh, design by introducing uh, uh, light and different uh, shapes to the uh, interior. Uh, the most uh, effective, uh, perhaps, of these open to uh, larger segments of the uh, population was uh, the uh, bath building. The uh, markets of uh, Trajan uh, had a rather uh, specific uh, function. Uh, one would not expect to have throngs of uh, citizens milling through the uh, markets. Uh, but uh, the uh, people who uh, entered the uh, forum would probably enter the baths in larger numbers. Uh, 3,000 people could uh, enter some of the larger uh, baths. And uh, these uh, people uh, had their senses, uh, all their bodily senses, uh, mental and uh, physical, titillated by the uh, uh, richness of the uh, marble that had been uh, brought from various parts of the uh, empire to, uh, f use, uh, to be used as facing on the uh, walls. So you had these uh, polychromatic uh, interiors, uh, a nice warm uh, sensation. Uh, the uh, <laughs> moisture uh, brought about uh, the uh, color of the uh, marble much, much uh, better. And the heat that was uh, provided by the um, uh, vertical uh, flues in the uh, wall, as you see uh, here, uh, they would be concealed also by the marble uh, facing. But uh, you see a huge uh, wall, each with these uh, vertical uh, tubes allowing uh, vertical uh, heating, which when combined with the uh, heat uh, coming in from underneath the floor, uh, provided uh, a really uh, warm uh, atmosphere. And examples of this could be seen not only in Rome, but everywhere. Uh, in uh, Ankara, uh, the 2,000 uh, years ago, uh, the uh, climate in the uh, winter was uh, quite harsh as it is uh, today. And yet, the huge areas of uh, under the floor uh, heating uh, show that in Ankara too, in the central uh, Turkey, uh, the uh, Roman uh, system had uh, penetrated and such amenities could be uh, offered to the uh, people. Uh, the uh, system, uh, as we said yesterday, is called the hypocost uh, system. Uh, it uh, is based on floors raised on uh, small uh, pillars, like uh, this one, so the hot air can circulate underneath the uh, bath or uh, rise through the uh, flues for uh, vertical uh, heating. The uh, floors and the walls could be uh, plain polychromatic marble or uh, mosaics like this one. Black and white mosaics were quite uh, common, but uh, the um, sharpness of the black and the shining quality of the uh, white in uh, contrast 
uh, could be uh, quite uh, effective when uh, coming into contact with uh, moisture. Uh, we uh, compared the Greek and the Roman uh, attitudes. The Greek uh, attitude based on physical uh, fitness, on uh, exercise, utilizing the uh, palestra or open exercise the ground of the uh, uh, gymnasium uh, component, which became incorporated into the uh, Roman uh, bath, which highlighted uh, the uh, uh, luxury uh, part. Uh, uh, the pampering the uh, senses, uh, spoiling the uh, senses for uh, pleasure, uh, for uh, having a, a good uh, life, a good uh, feeling, uh, not only in a bodily sensation or for warm uh, air uh, and uh, cleaning uh, yourself, but in the uh, visual uh, enrichment of uh, interiors, elevating you uh, mentally to make you feel uh, quite uh, good and uh, prosperous. And the interiors of some of these uh, baths were absolutely spectacular. I mean, huge uh, vaults, uh, richly uh, decorated with uh, mosaics, uh, stuccos, uh, the uh, floors with polychromatic marble, huge lunette-like uh, windows, and look at the human scale. So the uh, bathing uh, activity itself became quite uh, imperial, a very uh, special uh, privilege uh, indeed. And the uh, organization of uh, the uh, bathing into a uh, ritualistic uh, activity uh, to uh, include <coughs> the variety of uh, hot, warm, and uh, cold bathing in specially allocated uh, spaces and organizing them all within a very uh, intricate uh, uh, creative uh, interior uh, definitions, further enhanced with the use of polychromatic uh, marble, became a big architectural uh, orchestration <laughs> of uh, form, color, light, and uh, space, uh, with a, a strict symmetrical organization having an um, axial approach toward the frigidarium, uh, arranging the two palestrae, the uh, exercise grounds on both the sides, and uniting them all in this grand architectural uh, ensemble, uh, which was uh, tightly uh, unified, uh, tightly uh, organized, and tightly you know, uh, systematized, is a very uh, Roman uh, trait uh, indeed. You don't have freestanding uh, individual uh, the spaces uh, at uh, all. And in the provinces uh, too, uh, we chose the example of the bath gymnasium complex in Sardis, in uh, western uh, Turkey, uh, where you have the palestra, the exercise ground, and then you have a, a huge uh, component for uh, bathing, including a special uh, area for uh, perhaps uh, honoring the uh, emperor, but which displayed, you know, statuary. And then uh, beyond that, you had the uh, pool for cold bathing, and then the heated uh, hot bathing uh, areas uh, behind. The ruins today are uh, still uh, visible, uh, restored by uh, Americans <coughs> in the central part. Uh, the uh, exercise ground is in the front, the bathing units are <laughs> behind, and uh, the uh, bath occupied a large uh, space uh, within the uh, fabric of the uh, Roman city in the Sardis. The, uh, the utilization of uh, the classical uh, orders for uh, articulating the uh, facade, just like the uh, Colosseum, is uh, a trait which we see here in a bath building uh, as well, creating a variety in the form of the spirals and the uh, flutes, the uh, projections. It is almost uh, theatrical. You would have this uh, in the uh, stage building of uh, theaters as well, as we saw in Aspendos. So the bathing activity is uh, uh, theatrical uh, and showy, and it increases the image of Rome, while it uh, also provides comfort 
to the uh, citizens who were privileged enough to uh, have such uh, public uh, bathing. So we uh, stopped at that point uh, by um, uh, showing a uh, building uh, belonging to uh, the emperor immediately after uh, Trajan, the emperor uh, Hadrian. <coughs> the uh, emperor uh, Hadrian was a philosopher uh, emperor. His uh, origins were uh, rather interesting. He was not born in Rome, but he was born in Spain. And uh, it is said that he spoke Latin with uh, an accent. Uh, so this uh, Spanish-born emperor, you know, ruling in Rome, uh, was also a lover of the East and uh, the Greek uh, culture. And he spent uh, many, many years traveling in the East, in Greece and in uh, Anatolia. He visited places like uh, Antalya, uh, for example, while uh, he, uh, <coughs> uh, he donated uh, many buildings in uh, places like uh, Athens. So uh, he was uh, very impressed by the uh, Greek uh, culture and the uh, outward you know, appearance in uh, the uh, architectural exposition of Greek uh, culture. In uh, that respect, uh, when we uh, look at his achievements in uh, Rome, uh, the Pantheon stands out, which we shall uh, see uh, shortly. But uh, before we look at the uh, Pantheon, it is uh, noteworthy to talk about the temple of uh, Amor and uh, Roma. Uh, and uh, we said that in this uh, building, there is a compromise. On the one hand, the experiments which we saw in the time of uh, Trajan, and in the bath buildings, uh, coming into a uh, rich uh, peak of uh, expression, uh, are evident here too. Uh, in uh, the most conservative of building types, which is the temple. I mean, it is both official and religious. And the uh, temple form is the uh, uh, slowest to uh, change. It is the most resistant to uh, change. Uh, especially in the architectural uh, expression. Um, and you know that uh, in the early uh, Roman uh, period, the uh, Roman temple had uh, changed to receive frontalization. It had received an elevated <coughs> frontal uh, porch, uh, even though Pozzurana was not you know, being used to a great you know, extent. But uh, when we look at uh, Hadrian, it is going back uh, almost, you know, uh, 100 years or even 200 years. And uh, instead of the frontalized Roman uh, temple, we have a, um, a temple like a, a Greek uh, temple. It is surrounded by columns on all four sides. So uh, this is the uh, concession to uh, his Philhellenic uh, desire on the part of the uh, emperor. He is um, bringing that form back to uh, Rome uh, in a place where the uh, uh, most novel and ultra-modern architectural experiments were taking uh, place. This is quite incredible uh, because on the one hand, you have uh, the most unprecedented architectural experiments you know, going on, but on the other hand, you uh, are uh, conceding to uh, what is you know, traditional going before <coughs> the uh, Romans by uh, choosing the peristyle uh, temple. But this is also a compromise because the inside has nothing to do with uh, the uh, uh, conservative uh, Greek uh, tradition <coughs> or stone architecture. It is a uh, temple built through and through of uh, concrete. And just like the uh, villas, just like the uh, bath buildings, where you have these innovative interior space definitions, here too you have uh, niches which uh, lighten and articulate the uh, wall. Uh, you have uh, the huge uh, apses. And uh, what is more, you have an architectural joke 
two temples back to back. So uh, one chamber is uh, for the uh, representation of Amor, the uh, goddess of love or uh, Venus. Uh, and the uh, other one is for uh, Roma, the uh, personification of uh, Rome. And they are uh, back to back. They uh, don't face uh, each other. And uh, the uh, gods have their uh, names spelt backwards, <coughs> Amor and uh, the Roma. So red backwards, this is Roma and this is uh, Amor. So it's a kind of uh, architectural uh, joke uh, in this uh, sense. And when you look at one of the uh, hemicycles, you see that there's absolutely no stone uh, here. This is a, uh, a brick-faced uh, concrete uh, architecture utilizing you know, aggregate in every uh, sense. And for the uh, articulation of the uh, roofing of the uh, apse, coffers have been uh, used uh, with the utilization of uh, wooden formwork uh, again. Uh, and, uh, the uh, core is uh, concrete, uh, uh, showing that the modern technology, the uh, modern architectural uh, vocabulary is uh, used to the best possible advantage. But perhaps because this is a temple uh, where uh, the uh, official uh, and religious uh, image was important to maintain, it had to be uh, <laughs> enveloped you know, with uh, uh, a, a double uh, colonnade on all four uh, sides. In uh, one of the uh, uh, restorations of the uh, temple in uh, Rome, uh, the modern Italian uh, authorities uh, preferred to uh, uh, have uh, trees shaped like uh, columns to give the uh, impression of uh, columns. It's an intriguing restoration. Uh, but um, uh, again, uh, you can uh, see that not only the chamber of the uh, temple, but the substructures on which you know it is a stand is utilizing the uh, modern Roman uh, technique. When there are huge vaults uh, here, and the whole uh, temple, the chamber, together with the, uh, the columns surrounding it rest on this uh, concrete uh, platform. So in uh, conception, in uh, building, it is uh, thoroughly um, uh, modern. But in its uh, outward appearance, in the way the arches, the, the columns are utilized on all four sides, it is uh, uh, saying hello to a uh, Greek uh, tradition uh, uh, of which uh, uh, Hadrian was a great uh, fan. <coughs> but uh, other than the temple of uh, Amor and uh, Roma, uh, perhaps the best known Roman uh, edifice in the uh, world, in architectural history, is the Pantheon. Pan means all, Theos means uh, God, <coughs> so Pantheon means a temple to all the gods. Uh, if we look at the achievements the architectural achievements of uh, Hadrian in Rome, the city of Rome, uh, we see that uh, he had a very crowded city. Uh, the uh, Forum of Trajan, with its monumentality and variety, had been a difficult project indeed. Hadrian had absolutely no such hope. Uh, for one thing, uh, he didn't want to imitate what uh, Trajan had done. On the other hand, even if he did, there was simply no space left in Rome. So uh, there is no forum of Hadrian in Rome. And uh, the uh, uh, sequence by which each Roman emperor tried to surpass the preceding emperor uh, I mean, Augustus had the hemicycles, uh, Trajan uh, had the extravaganza in the form of uh, Trajan. Well, what Hadrian uh, had was a small space in uh, Rome, and he decided that he would also build something unprecedented, something which had been, uh, I mean, absolutely uh, unmatched until his own time. And his project was going to be 
a temple to all the gods, the pantheon. And uh, this is the uh, a building that he uh, came up with. A huge uh, cylinder, a plain uh, cylinder, done entirely in uh, Roman uh, concrete, using uh, pozzolana and uh, aggregate, surmounted with a uh, dome. And if you think that uh, uh, the uh, arch uh, had the potential of uh, horizontally extending into a uh, barrel vault. The barrel <coughs> vaults would intersect to form a uh, groin vault. What a dome uh, <coughs> actually is, is the uh, rotation 360 degrees of the arch. But uh, Hadrian uh, did not even need that because this is not a stone structure. It is done in concrete. So uh, to build a structure of uh, this uh, magnitude uh, must have required a tremendous amount of uh, wood that would be uh, cut for the uh, centering of the uh, skeleton, the skeletal uh, structure which would uh, contain the uh, concrete while it uh, dried in addition to the relieving uh, arches. But again, uh, if you look more carefully at this uh, project, you uh, observe uh, certain nuances. On the one hand, this is the most daring concrete uh, project undertaken in Rome until then. The uh, span of the uh, cylinder <coughs> was uh, unprecedented. The largest span until uh, that particular time. The largest span without any intermediate uh, supports. Uh, if you compare it to the uh, Colosseum, well, it looks like a battle. It's very, very plain on the exterior. So uh, you uh, uh, wonder where the uh, novelty uh, is. The uh, Colosseum impressed the senses with its architectural exterior by having classical orders in three stories. The uh, Pantheon, on the contrary, is an interiorized building. One might even suggest that uh, it is the Colosseum turned outside in, as if you took the outside of the Colosseum and uh, wrapped it you know, uh, in an interior uh, fashion to constitute the interior of the uh, Pantheon. Other than that, uh, the, uh, uh, the layout within the city uh, fabric is quite traditional. Like the Forum of Augustus, like the temple in the Forum of uh, Trajan, uh, you have a, a porch which looks like a temple, the elevated uh, temple, and then you have the uh, portico which uh, defines the uh, viewing of that temple-like uh, component. So, for all uh, outside appearance, for all um, uh, glimpses at first glance, once you uh, entered through the gateway of this open uh, space, what you uh, confronted was a very temple-like uh, structure. You had no idea, no inkling of the, uh, the barren, uh, empty, naked walls rising in uh, concrete. Not a single uh, column here, no capitals, nothing. But you didn't have an opportunity <laughs> to uh, stand back and see this huge concrete exterior uh, mass. What you saw <coughs> was something which looked like an uh, ordinary uh, temple. And indeed, uh, to uh, have something uh, very traditional uh, looking at first uh, glance for something which was ultra uh, modern uh, requires a uh, difficult architectural uh, choice for uh, the uh, transition from uh, the uh, temple-like uh, porch, the entrance to the Pantheon, and then the main body of the uh, Pantheon, which was a circular building, 
uh, was not an easy one. You couldn't just you know, stick them uh, together. Uh, they would not uh, meet. Hence, the architects came up with uh, this uh, transitional block here. So uh, you um, have the uh, entrance, uh, you uh, view the uh, temple, and then there is a transitional uh, block providing the connection to the uh, cylinder. And uh, this is all for exterior purposes. Then you uh, entered the uh, Pantheon through uh, here. And once you uh, entered, then you uh, encountered the uh, unprecedented uh, interior. Uh, in fact, the uh, optical uh, exterior approach was so graduated and so well planned that this uh, emphasis of the uh, pediment was accentuated by an outline of the uh, molding in the shape of a uh, pediment on the uh, transitional uh, block. So, uh, while uh, the architects are creating this extraordinary uh, building, they're also spending an equal amount of effort to um, disguise the uh, novelty from the outside. They're trying to make it look like uh, an ordinary temple. So is this the uh, triumph of novelty or is it the triumph of uh, compromise? Uh, there's no easy uh, answer to uh, this, this uh, solution. Today, when you uh, uh, visit the uh, Pantheon in uh, Rome, the uh, piazza or the uh, square, which is the uh, Pantheon, you encounter a uh, street level which is considerably uh, higher because with the uh, ages, the ground level <coughs> gradually uh, rose. So the uh, steps which uh, preceded the uh, Pantheon here, like a uh, elevated Roman temple, like a frontalized Roman uh, temple, are uh, no longer experienced today. <coughs> it looks as if it's resting on the uh, ground. The uh, porches have also you know, uh, disappeared. <coughs> so you have a better view of the, um, uh, the exterior part of the uh, cylinder uh, here uh, in the modern uh, times than the ancient Romans would have uh, had. But uh, still, you don't see that much because uh, there were uh, other uh, buildings in the time of the Romans as well. This uh, concession to tradition, uh, the uh, salutation of uh, tradition by uh, the Hadrianic you know, uh, architects is also uh, revealed in the uh, inscription of the, um, uh, the porch. Uh, which says that uh, Agrippa uh, made it. I mean, uh, uh, I'm sorry it's reversed, but Agrippa Kos, I mean, uh, Marcus Agrippa was the name of the uh, prime minister of um, Augustus, the first Roman emperor. So uh, Hadrian is connecting himself with the first Roman emperor by honoring the, uh, the minister uh, of the first Roman emperor. And yet we know that uh, this you know, uh, building was not built by Agrippa, even though uh, there uh, may have been an earlier uh, building in its uh, place. It was not uh, uh, circular, it was not of this you know, design, it was not of this magnitude. But just like uh, Constantine put on his arch, reliefs connected with the earlier Roman uh, emperors, Hadrian is uh, utilizing the most novel architecture. He is uh, combining that architecture with a very traditional uh, outlook. Uh, but he is also, in addition uh, to this, uh, honoring uh, the uh, connection with the uh, foundation of the Roman uh, Empire. So. He is uh, respecting the longevity of the Roman uh, the state. I mean, he is uh, increasing his own status because he is a person continuing the tradition. And uh, this uh, continuous uh, tradition, without an interruption, without a uh, break, uh, signifies the uh, strength 
and power of the Roman state, of which he is now emperor. So the past, or the uh, glorious uh, past, uh, also defines the uh, present through the uh, respect to the uh, earlier uh, history. And the uh, architectural expression of this is uh, revealed in the uh, inscription as well as the uh, use of a very traditional uh, element in connection with an uh, ultra-modern uh, uh, element. Uh, the uh, exterior of the uh, Pantheon looks uh, very plain and barren uh, today, not because of uh, the archaeological state of destruction, not because the marble has uh, fallen uh, off in time since 2,000 years, but simply because there simply never was uh, the marble there. There was never a uh, facing. The relieving arches, uh, which had been uh, built as the skeleton of the uh, Pantheon in order to uh, create uh, open spaces and in order to facilitate the drying of the uh, concrete, uh, uh, are visible on the exterior and uh, they provide a certain uh, low-key, modest visual articulation on the outside. There never was any kind of uh, marble, not in Roman times and not in the later medieval ages and post-medieval ages when the uh, Pantheon was converted into a church. The uh, unusual uh, design of the uh, Pantheon derives not only from the fact that it was a circular uh, temple, but from the fact of its uh, extremely simple uh, geometry. Uh, the uh, whole uh, building can be uh, considered like a, uh, a sphere, like a circle in a, a square or a, a sphere in a uh, cube. So the uh, diameter of the uh, floor, the entire you know, uh, diameter, is uh, equal to the uh, height from the floor to the top of the uh, dome. And in this uh, respect, you have the monumentalization of the, simply, the most simple uh, geometry that you could possibly uh, imagine. And the theme of the uh, circle and the uh, square is in uh, three dimensions as well as repeated in uh, nuances, reminding of this uh, fact throughout the uh, floor patterns and the coffers of the uh, building. In uh, such a uh, large building without internal uh, supports, the uh, uh, thickness of the uh, wall that was uh, required to uh, support such a uh, building was uh, enormous and the drying would have been a tremendously difficult uh, task. To, fa to facilitate uh, this, uh, there are uh, various perforations. On the cardinal axis, you see these uh, niches uh, here defined by uh, twin uh, columns and then within the thickness of the wall, you also have these uh, empty uh, spaces. Uh, in the interior, uh, the, uh, the openings uh, allow uh, articulation of the interior with the richness of a former exterior facade. You have a very rich looking uh, interior. But uh, within the thickness of the wall, with these uh, spaces, uh, with the exception of uh, these uh, two uh, here, which uh, had uh, a stairway and access to the uh, dome for uh, repairs, because uh, the dome was covered with lead sheets, and uh, from time to time uh, it was necessary to uh, climb up there for uh, maintenance. Other than that, all the others are empty uh, spaces, which uh, served to reduce the dead weight of the, uh, the thickness of the wall. So uh, uh, you have the relieving arches, you have these uh, dead uh, spaces, and uh, this facilitates the construction of this very uh, thick uh, wall. Uh, in the 
general organization of a plan. You see the, uh, uh, the porch, which looks like a, a Greek uh, temple from the uh, outside. And you go through the uh, granite you know, uh, columns, and then you uh, encounter this uh, enormous interior uh, space. And uh, until the uh, Hagia uh, Sophia, uh, no building uh, came close to having uh, this expand of uh, unsupported interior uh, space. So uh, Hadrian uh, uh, succeeded in creating something very uh, unusual, even though uh, it had uh, not the um, a large area in the city fabric that uh, Trajan's forum had had. He uh, made architectural uh, history by uh, creating a uh, setting uh, for the uh, gods. Uh, what is being honored is not himself, the previous Roman uh, emperors, but a uh, dedication to all the gods of the pantheon. And if you think that the uh, gods occupied the cosmos in the uh, cosmic dome, the eternal uh, dome, to uh, make a similar offering to the uh, gods in a uh, dome created by uh, men is quite a bold undertaking. And uh, in the uh, center was an opening called an uh, oculus. And uh, through the uh, oculus, the uh, light of the real heavens, the uh, cosmos, was captured inside and it uh, moved. So, uh, both uh, literally as well as metaphorically and symbolically, the uh, idea of the connection with the eternal uh, cosmos, the abode of the uh, gods, is uh, very uh, clear. And uh, the, the uh, uh, circular uh, form, the uh, sphere uh, the constituting the uh, basic you know, uh, planning of the uh, interior uh, volume as well as the plan of the uh, uh, pantheon derives from this uh, aspect. Intriguing though, if you uh, look at the uh, half point of the uh, sphere in this uh, way, the uh, dome I mean, appears to be, you know, springing from there because the uh, coffers, you know, come uh, down uh, quite uh, a lot. But when you look from the outside, it is quite a shallow dome which doesn't come, you know, all the way uh, down. So there have been these uh, interior and uh, exterior uh, adjustments to uh, uh, create the uh, thickness of uh, the uh, uh, walls uh, and the uh, dome uh, itself. All in all, it's an uh, architecture of uh, gradation of uh, materials. Look at the uh, thickness of the foundations in addition to the human scale. And then look at one of the perforations uh, here. Uh, sorry. Mm. I mean, if you uh, look at one of these uh, perforations here, the uh, wall is uh, made uh, to be uh, thinner. This is one of the uh, perforations, one of the uh, niches. So uh, the uh, thickness of the wall is uh, compromised. Lateral arches are being used. And then the uh, coffers uh, themselves also reduce the sheer mass uh, of uh, the uh, dome. Uh, uh, the uh, reduced uh, mass within the uh, coffer of the uh, dome is also reflected in the use of materials. Uh, toward the very uh, top, it has been discovered that the pumice stone is also used, ponza tasha. And pumice stone is a very light uh, material, so uh, the sheer weight of the uh, dome is uh, reduced uh, in this uh, uh, respect. The uh, relieving arches that are visible from the uh, outside uh, uh, are used to compartmentalize the uh, drying of the um, uh, concrete. The uh, dead spaces uh, here uh, also uh, reduce the 
uh, weight of the thick body of concrete that would have been uh, necessary. But still, uh, what we cannot see uh, today is the uh, wooden framework that uh, would have been uh, necessary uh, to uh, contain uh, the uh, wet uh, concrete. That must have been an enormous spectacle uh, during the process of construction. Unfortunately, we don't have ancient writers who tell us about uh, this uh, monumental uh, building uh, going up with the uh, wooden you know, uh, skeletal uh, marble uh, in the center of uh, Rome, but it really must have been uh, quite a uh, sight. The sheer amount of wood, the full you know, scale of the uh, building with the wooden uh, centering. Uh, the uh, gradation of uh, uh, materials, the uh, perforation of the uh, mass can be seen in uh, the uh, floor section at two uh, levels. At the uh, floor level, you see the uh, uh, niches, and then uh, at the uh, top uh, level, uh, the uh, perforations that you see at the you know, uh, bottom are no longer uh, valid there are just uh, some of the uh, empty uh, spaces. So they are reducing the uh, mass as you uh, go uh, on. From the uh, exterior, you see how shallow the dome is. It doesn't extend you know, all the way to the half point of the sphere or the uh, circle, uh, but in the interior, you see it uh, quite uh, better. You can also see uh, the uh, uh, problem uh, faced by having to uh, tack in the uh, transitional uh, block. So, uh, in its uh, original uh, state, uh, the uh, Pantheon looks like this. You came in through the courtyard, <coughs> you went through the uh, temple-like uh, part, and then you faced this uh, the, the unbelievable um, uh, interior in uh, three components. Uh, at the first uh, level, you had the alternating uh, niches articulated by uh, columns. At the second uh, level, you had an intermediate uh, course, which had these uh, pedimented uh, parts. And then at the third <laughs> level, you had the uh, dome, the weight of which was uh, reduced by these uh, coffers tremendously reducing the uh, mass. Uh, now, uh, what you don't see here, and what the Renaissance architects did not see, is a continuity from you know, uh, floor to uh, ceiling. There is no element that continues all the way uh, in a line of vision to the uh, top. And uh, this was a big problem to Renaissance architects in later ages uh, because uh, they were uh, trying to read Roman architecture with uh, Greek eyes, with the uh, vocabulary of classical architecture, not the Roman uh, domical architecture. The uh, architects of the, uh, the Pantheon uh, paid no attention to this. It was not a concern for them. In fact, it was a deliberate choice uh, not to have any uh, emphatic continuity from the floor all the way to the ceiling. You have the uh, ground floor, then you have this uh, horizontal uh, element uh, here, and then the top uh, part appears as if it is uh, uh, floating above this horizontal uh, part. Nothing, you know, uh, continues. And in this, an ethereal element where uh, the uh, dome of the uh, heavens is uh, suggested further with uh, stars that were uh, applied in golden color uh, with the uh, blue uh, color for the uh, coffers gives the uh, idea of the abode of the gods. It has an astrological kind of uh, uh, impact. So, uh, looking at it in reality, you see that uh, none of these uh, columns, none of these 
I mean, if you follow an axis from here, like this, it doesn't uh, match here, it doesn't match there. If you take uh, this, it also doesn't match exactly. So you look in vain for this. And in fact, in their uh, drawings and measurements, some of the uh, Renaissance uh, architects uh, tried to create imaginary <laughs> vertical lines because they felt it had to be that way, but it simply wasn't. So uh, the, uh, the attic uh, story, as we said, is the part which separates uh, this part and uh, that part in a very emphatic you know, uh, manner. So uh, what was the uh, intention uh, here? The intention was, again, uh, a very uh, simple one. Uh, the uh, vertical uh, unity of the uh, building from the uh, floor to the uh, ceiling was intended to be uh, provided with a shaft of light. So uh, the uh, shaft of light was the only element of continuity and it moved. It uh, captured an area of the you know, sun, of the uh, cosmos, in different times of the uh, year, in different times of the uh, day. It made a complete revolution within the uh, building and uh, no man-made feature, no man-made architectural element competed with it. And the uh, horizontality of the uh, attic uh, story uh, had that function to dematerialize the uh, concrete visual and physical you know, presence of uh, the uh, first story as well as the uh, coffers. It was an uh, optical uh, illusion operated by allowing a trajectory for the shaft of uh, light. And uh, in this 18th uh, century um, uh, painting by uh, Panini, uh, you <coughs> see the uh, oculus and then you see the uh, ball of light which would you know, circulate uh, all uh, the, around the, the uh, pantheon. And I draw your attention to the, uh, the patterning of the floor uh, as you uh, entered from one single uh, door. You enter the um, pattern which had alternating uh, the, the circles and uh, squares. And then uh, those uh, created the uh, pattern of, of you know, movement as you entered the uh, Pantheon. The uh, experience here is uh, quite uh, spectacular. Um, even when you enter it today with all the tourists uh, milling about, uh, you uh, don't have uh, an idea, a preconceived idea, as to where to go. Once you emerge from the uh, door uh, here, you uh, come in, you are confronted with this uh, spatial extravaganza, but you are not uh, belittled. You don't feel crushed by the interior space. You don't feel as if you have to, uh, you know, to t seek shelter in a, a corner before you become adjusted to this uh, grand uh, interior uh, space. Instead, what magnetically happens and perhaps that is the uh, function uh, of the uh, uh, shaft of uh, light, you, um, without knowing it, without making a decision, you start walking toward the center. You don't walk to the sides. You somehow you know, start proceeding toward the uh, center, and somewhere there, you uh, stand about and you begin looking around in order to uh, take in the, the uh, uh, building and uh, to try to uh, grasp the, the uh, magnitude of the building. And it must have been a very similar uh, experience for the ancient Romans uh, as well. So the uh, shaft of light you know, uh, came in at different you know, parts uh, and it uh, rotated along the simulation of the uh, heavens. Uh, the uh, coffers were painted blue. You had the uh, rosettes or stars in gild in the, the gold <laughs> color. And as the uh, ball of light and the shaft of light moved 
completing a uh, uh, the course uh, around the uh, dome, then uh, you had uh, basically a uh, repetition of the uh, uh, action of the uh, eternal uh, cosmos captured within the uh, dome of the uh, Pantheon. And in this uh, regard, this would have been an uh, extraordinary uh, feat. A small building, but an extraordinary uh, building. A building not dedicated to the uh, emperors, but a uh, building dedicated <coughs> by a grand Roman emperor to all the gods of the heaven, the pantheon, uh, nothing uh, less uh, than that. And here you see an even uh, better uh, view, uh, the shaft of you know, light and the ball of light. When I was a student, um, I like to tell this uh, story. Uh, the only chance I had to go to the uh, pantheon was in the summer, because in the semester you can't just uh, take off and uh, you know, go to uh, Rome. And in the summer, unfortunately, it doesn't rain that much. And my dream was always to go to the Pantheon and uh, see what happens when it rained. <laughs> and uh, because the Oculus is this grand open space, I mean, how does it look? How does the drop of rain, thousands of uh, crystalline particles come down you know, from, from the you know, heavens and what happens on the floor? And uh, a couple of times I remember uh, it's starting to rain, you know, uh, in some part in Rome. I would get in the first taxi or the first bus racing to the Pantheon and the rain would stop. And so I would never, you know, see it. But one day I succeeded and uh, it was a spectacular appearance. Uh, the uh, uh, light itself uh, becomes almost crystallized. And the you know, raindrops are visible. Uh, you, you see the shaft in an even more emphatic way. But the floor surface is uh, so enormous that you don't get pools of water. I mean, it, it <laughs> disintegrates uh, somehow. And uh, when you uh, consider some of our you know, buildings, uh, this, this building uh, here, in fact, uh, with uh, the rains, the front of the uh, secretary uh, becomes uh, full of pools of water uh, because the windows let in that water. I think uh, we might have something to learn from the uh, enormity of, of the you know, Pantheon in that uh, regard. So with the uh, Pantheon, we have um, a, a great you know, uh, episode of Roman uh, uh, building venture uh, completed. Uh, afterwards, the uh, experiments uh, continued in the bath buildings, in the bath of Caracalla, in the bath of uh, Diocletian, uh, until the uh, late antique uh, period. When we uh, come to the uh, late uh, antique uh, period, uh, things begin to change uh, slightly in the third and fourth centuries, especially after uh, 250, and to be more specific, in 284 uh, AD, uh, the uh, borders of Rome were uh, no longer tight and secure as before. Uh, peoples uh, started to uh, coming in from the uh, borders, uh, whom Romans considered barbarians. I mean, they started, you know, uh, coming in, uh, but this. Uh, uh, could not be uh, stopped with the uh, central uh, rule in uh, Rome. The emperors were no longer so uh, powerful. <laughs> so a system called the Tetrarchy was instituted. Uh, one emperor in the east and one emperor in the uh, west. Uh, and both emperors had their uh, Caesars and assistant uh, emperor. Uh, the uh, assistant uh, emperors uh, would um, secure the position of the emperor in the event that the emperor would be assassinated. So even the life of the uh, emperor was not uh, secure, let alone the uh, Pax Romana, let alone the uh, road network where the marbles came in 
where the taxes came in, where the supplies uh, came in, and a mood of uh, insecurity started to uh, pervade the you know, Roman uh, Empire. And uh, if we consider uh, the architectural expression as an uh, expression of the uh, mentality of uh, periods, the uh, late antique uh, period is um, an opportunity to observe uh, that change in uh, more uh, simplified uh, forms, in more uh, simplified uh, architecture, uh, where a uh, inner uh, quality, a more uh, spiritual uh, quality started to uh, pervade the new architectural uh, production. But that uh, I shall you know, uh, continue with uh, after your um, exam uh, the next uh, week. So, I will finish uh, here without going into the later uh, antique. And uh, I would like to uh, make an announcement. Uh, like uh, the previous exam, you go to uh, Kuppelt. The exam will be in Kuppelt. Be on time. Don't get sick because, I mean, not uh, Kuppelt, the Mimarlik Amphisi, sorry. And uh, the uh, uh, getting of uh, a uh, makeup is very, very uh, difficult, so uh, try to be you know, present uh, there at all uh, counts. The uh, methodology is identical. So I am sure that every single person in this class is very experienced uh, now. And if you have been uh, coming uh, regularly to the uh, classes, I think you don't even need to study. <laughs> so uh, I wish you all uh, good luck and see you in Mimarlik Amphisi next Monday at 9 o'clock. Thank you. <laughs>